you guys were actually a wee bit of a, a good luck woman for us last time to be fair because we'd lost on the Friday uh, you just came on the Monday and since that time we our next 18 games we'd won 16 through 2 uh, up until we lost a quarter final a couple of weeks ago to still in uni and then last week we won again so that's 20 games uh, 17 wins so we put it add into you guys hopefully you have the same impact this time Obviously winning games and, and hopefully a cut of trophies is important but for me to get the best out of young players and to be enjoying it so I think the, the atmosphere has been great. Obviously there's been a wee bit of uncertainty recently around the club but with all that going on I think for us it was probably important at that time to just kind of reflect on how we've done and, and not let that be a distraction for us because individually every player's developed really really well. I think they're getting a good bit of exposure individually and as a team which is important as well so I think we've been able to just kind of create our own wee bubble and it's still been really, really positive. Every team that's considered an Easter Scotland team and the, the own development set up uh, and involved in this club, so we're in the quarter-final stage, as I say, we get FC Edinburgh tonight, Conference A is a combination of SPFL and Lone League clubs, uh, so the Lone League clubs being like ourselves, Spartans, uh, East Cobray, Cumberland Colts, teams like that. Then your SPFL clubs, you've got Kelty Hearts, he's five, still in Albion, etc. So I think probably because the majority of those clubs are based in the East, we've just kind of been assigned to that. Has its pros and cons. The, the negatives, I suppose, are it's a wee bit more travelling for myself and the boys on a Friday night. But George has been really good with us uh, because he takes the minibus any away games. The issue with that is, but it's only 14 spaces, so I need, <laughs> I need to get the boys first dibs on that. And, I've been papped tonight, that's why I'm driving. Uh, so that's the that see really that's the only negative because it's a it's a really good leak. Uh, so we can kind of accept the fact that we got to be a bit more travel uh, to kind of make up for the fact that it's really competitive, really good games. Every kind of away game is always at a good stadium, stuff like that. Uh, and the standard's been really good. I think for for the boys, it's it's the best thing to be in the best sort of league as possible. I'd made the point to people last year. Sai, that's actually been one of them. Of a couple of games I went to watch, I recommended some players off of the back of watching an under-20s development game. There are players out there. I'd like to think that anyone that's came to watch us this year has probably had a similar impression on many of our players of the fact that you know they're at a, a level that's maybe a wee bit lower than you know professional or whatever. But there's some really, really good talented players in there. So if I was MD at a kind of first team at, at Lone League level, at League Two, League One, I'd, I'd definitely get myself down to some of these games because there's some really, really good players. There's such a massive jump between under 18s and first team. You know, whether that's at your top end of Scottish football or your Championship League One teams. Obviously, with, with there no being a reserve league, there's not an under 21 teams anymore. We've had a couple of examples of boys who were at under 18 academy, or were at an academy at under 18's level. They're now too old for under 18's, uh, but they're maybe not quite ready for a first team level yet. So they're kind of in that in-between stage where they could stay at a club, no play any football, but have that kind of tag of being signed by a senior team, or else they could kind of come out of that system, come to a club ourselves, build ourselves back up, get a wee bit of exposure, hopefully improve as a player and then kick on again for there. So I think it's been a really good gap for a lot of players who, because like, football's not a race, like, a lot of boys can kind of make the step up at 17, but guys, like, I mean, there's loads of examples of, of players at the very top end of world football that maybe don't get that break until they're 20, 21, so it's trying to find that kind of gap for them. So I think for a lot of players that this has been good for that, uh, and hopefully that proves to be the case for some of our boys. I started when I was four or five at Park Villa. I went to St Mern for, I was there for about five years. Then last year uh, I got released in about f March. Then f after that I went and just played with my pals. Kind of fell out, lost confidence in that. It was mostly a surprise for, for me, not for me, but for my dad it was a surprise because he thought he was getting told all along that it was alright, was, everything was alright. And then it came to the meeting nights and they said it's probably better for, for me and for the club for me to move on. But at first I was like, I, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Robbie texted my dad saying, would I like to come down for a couple of sessions, see if I like it or not. Because I didn't think I was going to get a game or anything. And 
Robbie said, come down for a session. I came down and enjoyed it and been here ever since. Dumbarton Stadium, I well, it was at the, I think we played on the Friday and that game was on the Tuesday and Robbie, was, Robbie said to me on the Friday after the game that I might have a chance of, because well, I've been on the bench and that, he was like, you might have a chance of like, starting or coming on at least. So I obviously took me out and says, um, you've deserved this opportunity and that, I'm going to start you tonight. That game, it was massive man, that was probably like, the hardest game I've played like, in my career. I well at the start obviously, before the uh, kicked off, the warm up and that, I was nervous and then as soon as the whistle went, I think five minutes in or something, I made a slide tackle, win the ball and then that just kind of settled me. I was kind of obviously nervous in the ball and that, but as soon as I got the ball, I just tried to move it quick, get a quick pass. But I felt like my, like my football career was like back. I've no chucked it or anything, like I'm back playing decent level and that. I started off just my local boys club at um, seven year old. My friend actually got picked up by Party Thistle. And it was through him, his dad said to the scout to get any players, uh, and he recommended me. That's how I ended up at Partick. So St. Partick on my 10th birthday was there until I was 16 year old, and ended up leaving when I was 16. And then took a break for about two or three years. Played just back my pals, ended up playing up front for a bit. But then uh, COVID hurt, a lot of players started to leave, and uh, I ended up just taking a break for football together. Just kind of, to say, fell out of love it for a bit. I got a bad injury as well, it put me for a couple of months and I just didn't, I didn't want to play anymore. So I took a break for a wee, a wee bit. On Monday to Wednesday, you're, you're, you're always looking forward to training because you know it will be a good drill, stuff like that, a good session to put on. Always has been. Because when I was up with the first team, you've got two good goalkeepers and Devin Barzo. They're passing on knowledge to you, Jim, the goalie coach, and he's been brilliant as well. Jeezy, he's playing at the top level. The way Robbie wants us to play, playing out for the back, he, he always likes me to step up sometimes when we're playing out and kind of, like a middle centre back when we're building, which is the two centre half wider and wants me to play, which I, I really enjoyed, because obviously I do enjoy playing on my feet, so yeah. See just the relationship I've been able to build with these boys, it's been honestly brilliant. Uh, and just seeing how much they've developed as players, like at, one of the reasons I wanted to come to this level is when I worked at Party Thistle, so I was working with like 13, 14 year olds, so they're always going to get better naturally because they're getting bigger, stronger, faster. So I think to develop players at like 18, 19 could potentially be a bit more of a challenge because they've maybe already developed habits, they're already physically developed to a certain extent. So that was kind of a challenge for me to see if I'd be able to do that, but I would honestly say every single player's improved. Uh, we're a different team for when you guys first came to watch us to now. So that, that's that been the biggest, so that's been the most rewarding thing. That and the fact that I touched on it at the start, like you can see how much these boys really enjoy it. See now, it's as if they've been playing with each other for 10 years, like they're so close. So for me, that, that's probably been the sort of most pleasing, most rewarding thing of, of doing it this year. Bonnets on now, that's when you know it's game thing. I'll be the corners. You cannot guarantee a 10 out of 10 performance, but you can guarantee 10 out of 10 application. We need that for every single player, whether you're a starter, on the bench, Ethan, myself and Andy, everybody. 10 out of 10 application. We're here for one reason, lads, to get a fucking semi-final. Alright, lads?
me lads, first 10, 15, very scrappy, but I don't know about you, but I thought it was scrappy. Can't quite put my finger on why. For the first goal, it's for the best pass to play. The second goal, great header at the edge of the box. Unbelievable uh, 1v1 header, or 50-50 challenge header over the left-hand side. And I said to you before the game, if you're going to be the sitter in a game like this, in front of two, as much as I can, I play in one. Second balls are massive, anticipating that, you anticipate it on the edge of the box, brilliantly. Benji and Lewis Link, we get the penalty. Brilliant. Alright, so as much as he's got to go, none of that happens if the stuff before it doesn't happen. But that does not just fucking happen for 45 minutes, lads. It's got to be beyond that as well. Well, just to touch on the first bit a wee bit. Um, so I think the big part <coughs> is the goal kicks in general build up when Cal's got it at his feet, right? So what Robbie's saying is, which is so important, is we've done it once, Lewis, you, you might remember, when Cole gets the boy wraps into you in the 10, you get turned and you drive at the back door. That only happens because you stand in the space. See if you're in space, mm -hmm. don't fucking move out it. It's up to them to find you in the space. See the more you want to get attracted to the ball, attracted to the ball. Right. You're then, you've got a man on you, and when you receive it, or something up your arse straight away. So basically how it all happened, the build up was, Cole, he's so eager to jump you when you get the ball. So remember what we talked about, the, the Tory, Glenn, uh, Tory Glenn game, the indoors? Stand <laughs> on it and attract him. And Alex, I think you've grown into the game in the last 20, 30. And see when we can just play five yard bounce passes off you, all it does is disrupt their shape. Because they want to latch on, they want to press. And see just by all eight and goal, you're just trusting Alex, bouncing it to each other. All we're doing is just shifting them across. And eventually, that's when these spaces open up. What we've done great between minute 30 to 45 is we've picked the right moments to do those things. So it needs to be the same decision making is so important in football. And do not fucking forget, we are here to get in a semi final. Alright, lads, so it's about winners or the pitch. Alright, come on. Every much what about before the game, during the game, half time, it's going to be brilliant. As I said, you can't guarantee you're going to have your best again, but in terms of application, communication, desire, don't go went ahead, everything, lads. Lads, I know we're a good team, we've always known we're a good team, but are we fucking winners? That's the bit we need to prove now, that's the bit we're going to fucking prove in these last two trophies. Alright, lads? Yeah. In few. No, just got to say the same, lads. Just think of how, how far we've came as a team. Eh? There was only, what, three players involved in this team at the start of the season. All new group, all different style, they've played in different managers, <laughs> different tactics, whatever it may be. And like Robbie touched on there, we've had a lot of credit for the results and how we play. I don't think we get anywhere near enough credit for how hard we work, because the fucking desire in this dressing room is fucking excellent. And that makes us more proud than any result, because <coughs> our development's always been the most important thing. And they were in the semis, they can't even bag us, can they? <laughs> <laughs> I've not looked, but I think the boy said there it's ourselves, come with all Colts. East Coast Bride and Spartans. <clears throat> so again, as I touched on earlier, the strength of the league, that's all four teams that are in our league, so uh, against one of them, I don't know if it's a if it's a neutral venue or it's just a home and away tie. 
If it is, we'll be away. That's a fucking certain I'll be the fellas away one, but I could take any, as I say, it's teams that we played against and all three of them are really good, so but if you get to this stage you need to beat the best teams if you want to win it, so I'm pleased enough. Tonight's gonna be really exciting. It's our last chance to get a bit of silverware on that, so that'll be good tonight. Excited for it. They are, they are a good team. They play a good team and they play well. Aye, they're not they're not undefeated like for a reason, Jack. I was at uh, Broomhill last season, um, you know, kind of just when Broomhill was on its own. And then, of course, Open Goal took over and, uh, yeah, just ended up here afterwards. I was quite interested in that, like, I'm quite into wanting to become maybe like a presenter in sport or something like that. So, watching, of course, Sai and Slaney and the guys kind of like hosting, like, the shows, uh, yeah, it's good to kind of, like, work with them slightly and like see the kind of ins and outs of it before. So obviously it gives you a taste of kind of what first team football is going to be like playing with bigger guys like grown men of course. So that was really good being involved in that. And also just again, learning off the likes of, you know, Andy and Sai and stuff and uh, all the guys like Gaz as well and Conroy and things like that and Del too. Uh, that was really actually, you know, good to be a part of and I really enjoyed it. Robbie's been brilliant. Uh, Really enjoyed, you know, working with him as a coach. You know, teaches you about kind of, you know, reactions off the ball, your attitude, how you should apply yourself every training session, and you know, keeping up to the standard that he sets, along with Andy as well, of course. And um, it's been brilliant to work with him. You know, really good coach. Everyone, as soon as like we're training and we're in that competitive zone, everyone tunes in. Everybody wants to win, and it's brilliant to have teammates like that because it sets the bar for you as well. And it makes you, of course, think in your head, right, well, I've got to keep up because if I don't, they're going to be on me, do you know what I mean? So having teammates that motivate you as well and hold you to account when maybe you're not doing as well as you should be doing and you know it, then it is a really good environment to be in. And every teammate and obviously the squad all have that same quality of wanting to win, wanting to do the best they can and obviously not taking any passengers either, which is fantastic to have in a team because... Again, it's that winning mentality and good competitiveness. It's my last year at under 20, so looking to you know push on into a first team and get a, a bit of a taste kind of how you know men's football is and the structure of it and how different it is to you know playing with boys and things like that. So really looking forward to next season in that sense. But as well as um, of course going into everything else that's involved, it will be really exciting and especially in media, uh, we'd like to see how far that can go, potentially, you know, covering games, whether it's, uh, you know, commentating or, you know, writing uh, kind of articles and different things in football. So just trying to see where both the roles can kind of go and try to just, my ambition is always to try and do as well as I can in whatever I'm involved in. So hopefully the pair of them can, can sprouse onto something good. When you commit to something, you want to put in all your effort that you've got. The fact that they are so appreciative for the things I do for them just makes me want to do it more. All the guys get on well. Like it's, there's healthy competition amongst them all. Uh, it's, it's a good, good laughs, and I think that shows in our performances. See you getting first-hand experience and learning how to work in a changing room, how to how to act, how to respond to stuff on the field. It's just been brilliant. I've been. I've been accepted to Glasgow Cali. Uh, well, I've got a conditional offer. I'm waiting for my results to come back uh, for physiotherapy. Uh, and I've mm, just finished my college course in sports therapy this year. Uh, so I'm hoping to just progress on. If we, like, as much as every single one of us here and the coaching staff want to win, uh, that's all about the progression of the, and development of the players. Like making sure the boys are doing the best that they physically can do and so they can go into bigger and better things. That's been since day one what Robbie's installed into me. That's just what I do. Loved it. Loved every moment of it. The ups and the downs, it's been brilliant. 
we all are you know mates now of course and outside the football like to spend time with each other and I think for myself you know there has been ups and downs but you know it's been super beneficial and I feel like you know I've kind of bettered myself as a player of course working with these guys and like learning from them so uh, yeah I think kind of throughout this season as a team as well it's been really good you know great teammates definitely one of the best teams I've been a part of and credit to my teammates as well who've just been fantastic as well Attitude, everything, taking on instructions, just been superb. So I've really enjoyed it this season and hopefully we can end it on a high. How many fucking players make mistakes? There's not fucking, it's gonna happen. We just need to react properly, say all the time. Same with, with free kicks, whatever it is. See when, once the ref blows the whistle, aye, it's an actual reaction, big shout. Just react right away, it doesn't matter, it's not gonna change it. All right, it's the same with them, same with us, we just react properly. Have we had chances? Aye, will we get more? Aye, will we take another one? Absolutely. Four. 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 Do the shift, mate, alright? As we're lucky if we did for it, I totally appreciate that every one of us, I'd like to think this game enjoyed our football goal better, but I know for a fact, we are full of winners lads, and it would not be the fucking same if we didn't have some tangible at the end of it, that's a trophy. So as much as we enjoy this, lads, we didn't win that just to celebrate winning that game of football, we need to fucking win a final now. Yeah. Alright, so from now to then, it's full focus on that, and we'll fucking win this trophy. Alright lads? Yeah. Even when I was four, I played with my brother's team. He's two years older than me, so... And my dad was a coach there, so I always just went and trained with them. It was just an academy from... I started about under-12s and then all the way to under-18s. I knew I didn't think there was going to be any offers at the, at the end of the season for me, so... It was about six months till the end of the season and I took my job as an apprentice kitchen fitter. And then, just, I didn't really play a lot of games since I took the job, and then... At the end of that, I just decided, I think my time's up. It was hard at the beginning because I mean that was I played with all the players from for about five years at the same squad, so I didn't really know what to do. But then I just had to get on with it. That's just part and parcel of it. It's been one of it's definitely been one of the best seasons I've played in my football career anyway so far. But obviously going unbeaten for I don't know 18 games was it, and then obviously the lows getting beat off Stirling in the cup. But the things happen, so you just had to get on with it. I've Andy and Cheesy and Ethan and everyone, George as well, they've all been really good, but I think Andy helped me a lot because Andy's played left back as well before, so he knows the position and he helps me with my game and when to go, when to stay and decision making off the ball and all that. Aye, that was off a massive. Playing your first senior game when you were 18, it was in Hugman A the game, 
So he hugged me and he went, Friday, I was maybe off work, or we trained on the Friday maybe. And then he told me on the Friday after training, we're going to start you, so. Also I was buzzing, but I didn't say anything to anyone, I was just. It was good, it was definitely a lot quicker and faster and more physical, but I thought if I just stuck to what the plan was, it would be all right. We got the three points, didn't we, so. It's been one, it's definitely the best team I've played for anyway. Without a doubt, it's, cause we're all pals, it's not really just a football team, because even our group chats and all, we're always talking during the week or the game day, before the game, everyone's up for it, so it's always positive. I knew Robbie um, and he spoke well. I, I met him, he came, actually came all the way through to Falkirk where I stay to sit me down and talk me about through what his vision was. Um, and both what I wanted to do in football matched in terms of wanting to win. He, he, he did say to me I'd be playing and he wanted to make me as captain for the 20s team so, so obviously it's, it's nice nice to have that. It's just it's just a natural thing, I just I can't shut up. I need to talk, I need to I need to lead and help people through the game so it's just it's just something that I can't play football with talking and leading through a game. From the start to where we are now is that we've improved massively and that communication and teamwork together that all comes with time which it's, it's definitely happened because we're a much better team now than we were then. So to get to get silver over with them would be brilliant. It would be a great way to end it. Ah, he's obviously getting to the final. I think uh, we've been very unlucky to miss out in cups in the league. Just errors at stupid times and it's cost us. But it's we're here now, we've got a final and we're, we're looking forward to it. Making the final is... It's just been brilliant, like really good feeling of course, you know, to beat as well Cumbernauld Colts, you know, 2-1 who've went and won the league and they've been brilliant with their consistency as well, but to beat them of course in the semi-final and reach the final against East Kilbride is, you know, really exciting and I think all the boys as well, I would say we kind of deserve to be there for the hard work we put out this season and how we've, of course, you know, played as a team throughout. Uh, it's just, yeah, really exciting and uh, I'm really looking forward to it as well. Hey lads, what were you saying? I played the first one that we wanted to play. How? It was just too scared. How, how but? It's just because it's a final, but it's just a business of the air. It doesn't matter if it's a final. Lads, it says before the game about we'll get to a point where it'll manage itself. Usually we'll do the stuff we've been talking about all year. Lads, I'll be honest, again, I touched on it. I can accept anything football, bad games, bad touches, mistakes, whatever. It'll happen all the time. Like that, miss. I can accept that. It's going to happen. And by the way, that was at 1-0, 1-H back 2-1, so it doesn't matter anyway. 
See if you miss a chance, lads. I don't want to see you run about that for five minutes. It's done. It's fucking done. The best players in the world miss chances all the bastard in time. Now that it seen ticket with Rangers used to watch Chris Boy miss three, four sitters a game and then he go and score two. That's what it's all about. You're the main man. Not just your main man. You're the fucking main man in this league. And you finally touch the ball. I need to see more for you. See if you get us that, this could be three, four, five. That's how fucking good you are. See if we're not playing well and you're playing well, we could still win the game. Alright, and the rest is are playing alright, so you take that other level, you will do it this half, you're too good up or naughty. I want that arrogance, I want that swagger. That's what boys are like playing against. We've, we've been talking about it, saying he's got everything now. Everything. This is a Josh for October. I don't want that, I want a Josh for April, May, whatever. I need that guy. He'll fucking put pressure on people, he's a nasty bastard as well, and he'll get in about people, and he'll fucking zip one in the top corner, that's going to come this half, I know it. We've done the 45, that's the scrappy bit done now, now we play ourselves into the game. Alright lads, but listen, it sounds so, so negative, we've had the far better chances. This is the level we've got to, when we're not quite at our best, that's not good enough for us, even though we're 1-2-1, and we've had the better chance in the cup final. But we set our own standards and we know we can still be better, that 45 is done. It's a new one, we show more enthusiasm, we show more confidence, we grab this game, but it's scuffing it, we're going to fucking win this cup. Alright boys, come on! Come on! Lads, listen, it's important, right? When you go into this, every one of these are aware. And by for me, him, Cheesy, Ethan, we're so fucking proud that every one of these, alright? When you go up there, do not fucking have any fear, any doubt, whatever, because you've done as proud already. Alright, but I've got a fucking right good feeling this. Lads, I've picked, right? I've picked the, I've picked the order, so just go with it. Josh, Josh up, Josh, Chow, Lewis, Benji, Lorenzo. Alright? Happy with that lads, that's a fight. Alright boys, lads, hey, lads, we'll fucking do this boys, alright, we will fucking do this, don't worry about it. Come on lads! Come on lads! Come on lads! Come on Ah! 
That probably summed up our season in its entirety. Don't like to do things simple. My girlfriend's spot on, I need to learn to enjoy things better because all I could think about even after we won the penalty shout is we should have done this, we could have won that 90 minutes if we'd done this a bit better. You're never going to have the best game all the time but the best players and whether it's football or anything, you always react positively. Uh, and obviously, to be fair, he's got Brady done that as well tonight. Uh, can tell them we went up three times and they came back but again they react positively I said to them listen it's done they've scored in the last minute we've still got a chance to win it and everyone stepped up and, and put theirs away brilliantly so I'm absolutely buzzing for, for all of them M O M, my guy fucking brilliant God. yeah heat up big guy unlucky hey you're excellent big guy well done my boy Hey, yeah. Yeah. That means I formed to win with a group of boys and the staff and Ethan and that because um, they're the best group of guys I've played with. He touched on Ethan. What a man he is, by the way. What a guy. He's been my best signing. I've said that to him. I'd take him anywhere in football. Cheesy as well. Brilliant guy. Came in with his mid season at Andy. Obviously, recommend him known for hearts and said he'd want to do it. And he'd stressed the fact that he was a great guy and got all my boys. For me, I think stuff like that is so important. It's so important that. If you've got a physio, you've got a goalie coach or whatever that the boys got on with them. And again, I was just fortunate that I had contacted, I know, I know a guy that's a head lecturer in Cardano College. I just asked if you get any training physios want to come help out. And he says, I think I've got somebody who'd be perfect. And he was right, he was perfect for it. So uh, it's worked out really well. Yeah, listen, any, any of my pals, any of the Hearts boys, they all know how much these, these boys mean to me. I talk about them all the time, I think they're getting a bit bored there. But yeah, just like I said, it all started with Robbie, just asking for a bit of help in the first day of pre-season. Uh, and I, I got the bug for it, simple as that. But I think that's down to the, you know, the group of boys more than anything. Like he says, regardless of the outcome of the penalty shootouts, we're so proud of you regardless. Yeah. Step up to the plate, second half, fucking excellent. Well done, boys. Well done, boys. Come on. When I was a young boy, um, there was a reserve league. So that bridged the gap straight away from youth football to the first team. And, you know, first team players would drop down and play. And, Again, that was good for them because they're playing against first team players who are developing in their own way, but you know, there's maybe not quite the money in Scottish football there is elsewhere. So, quite a lot of teams only have sort of 18s football, then that jump for 18s to first team. So, when players get released, they can sort of lose their way a wee bit. I've said it so many times there's not one boy in our dressing room that hasn't improved this year. And for me, that's more important than this cup final, any, any success that we've had in terms of silverware. You know, as long as they improve and develop as players, that's all that matters. I think the standard uh, in the, in the under-20s development league this year has surprised me, to be honest with you. Uh, and we were delighted that it was at a ground like this because, you know, it was uh, I think it's a 3,000 capacity of this stadium and I, I don't know how many there actually was, but it felt full, uh, obviously being a, you know, a, a tight-knit stadium and I thought the atmosphere generated that was great for the lads and you know, I'm sure they'll live on that experience. It doesn't matter what level you play at, no matter what standard of cup you're, you're, you're playing in, if you win a cup final, you remember that for the rest of your life and the boys you were a part of it with. So, you know, I'm delighted that, you know, if I can, I'm lucky enough to bump into these boys five, ten years down the line, which I hope happens, you know, we can still talk about the memories we had today. If we won X, Y and Z trophy, but none of the players had improved, they're not going to move on to better things, they'll chuck football and end up playing Sunday League in the next couple of years, then for me that'd have been, that'd have been a failure. I can honestly go through every player and say they've improved as a player and as a person. One of the brilliant things for me is a lot of parents have even came up and said, like, obviously the boys are a wee bit older, but still they're some of them are living at home and stuff, and they've said like the difference in X player, his confidence, his maturity has went through the roof. So when you hear stuff like that, it's brilliant and it just makes all the stress of games like that worth for you. Ryan Mounds, my son, he plays on the left wing. Oh, Ryan started at an early age, you know, I feel like four year old since he could kick the ball at his feet. It's a good way from the end of the season to be fair. They've, they've done really well, uh, and obviously. We've followed them everywhere. Well, everyone knows how close knit we are, um, how together we are the full season. The, the man on the change room, the togetherness, it's been absolutely brilliant. So to win with that group of players is amazing. Best feeling in the world.
genuinely the decision to come and do this and take this team is the best decision I've made in football because uh, not just for this year but I built a relationship with these boys that will hopefully what I will keep for many many years knowing that all of them have enjoyed it every one of them have kind of came from different different environments in the last kind of year or two in football so the fact you're able to take all these boys from different areas club them together and see them go on so well flourish as footballers leave us better players leave us going on and having better options is just the best feeling ever so I'm delighted that's, that supersedes any sort of result or, or trophy Listen, I'm sorry the cameras are here for this. I wouldn't have it, but fucking circumstances, situation that we're in, we're going to need to be here. Uh, not going to be around the bush, lads. Uh, me, Slaney, Open Goal, we're not going to be doing this again next year.